So here we are. We are in section 7.1 and 7.2, the last two sections of the year. Uh, these sort of, forgive the word, but go off on a tangent to uh, the previous things we've been doing with trigonometry. Uh, the previous things deal a lot with, uh, uh, you know, the trigonometry and geometry of triangles, uh, either in the unit circle or not in the unit circle. These two sections get at these things called identities, which are equations or statements that are true for any input of angle or for most inputs. Um, there are exceptions, but if you were to if you were to count them, uh, well, let's say you would be able to count the exceptions. Okay, so for 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 at this level, at this stage in the game, it's for they they're true for everything, but they don't have to be. That's more of a theoretical sort of thing. Um, if, when you complete your mathematics major, um, which I know all of you will, and then go into graduate school for math, uh, you'll you'll look at these really weird cases where identities hold almost always. And so we're working on these identities. Um, more or less, identities are alternative ways to write the same thing. More or less, that's what an identity is. Um, so this first example, or these first two problems, uh, I took them straight, straight out of the very beginning of this section. Um, so numbers three and seven, the, and I'm gonna go back and look at the instructions. The instructions say, write these expressions in terms of sine and cosine, and then just simplify. Um, so number three, it's got a tangent in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that by writing tangent as, by its definition, uh, in order to get something that's exactly the same. So cosine of t times tangent of t, but tangent is sine of t over cosine of t okay and now if we, we look at this we say well hey um, we could cancel out the cosines right cosine divided by cosine is just one so that's that and this turns into sine of t so what we've just shown is that cosine t times tangent of t equals sine of t. And that, that works for pretty much every angle, um, maybe all angles. Okay, so this is, this is the essence of an identity. It's just taking something, writing it in a different way using given facts, and there you have it. Um, number seven, a little more complicated, but it's, it's the same idea. We're going to take tangent and we're going to take secant. We're going to rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines. We're going to simplify it as much as we can, and that'll be, that'll be the end of it. So uh, there, there's no one way to do this. Um, there's the Pythagorean theorem for tangents and secants. Um, we could do that. You, you remember, I, I hope, this sine squared t plus cosine squared t is one, always. From this, you can get the same thing using tangents and secants. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do what I did here in number three with the definition of tangent, and then I'll add in the definition of secant. But there's multiple ways that you can you can go about this. So, so here we go. Tangent, like here on the left, 
and number three is just sine over cosine. So this, this is the same as sine of t over cosine of t squared minus secant squared. Well, secant by definition is one divided by cosine. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So this is one over cosine of t. Oh, I'm using t's. I should be using x's. I apologize. Uh, x, x, x squared. So one over cosine is secant and I'm squaring it. So now we'll, we'll carry through this squaring business. So this is sine squared of x minus oops, over cosine squared of x minus one squared, which is one over cosine squared of x. Okay. Well, what is, um, what, what can we do here? Well, they have the same denominator. So we can just write it as one fraction. So I'm not gonna write a new line for that. I'm just gonna erase what I've got here. I hope that's okay. And now this, this is, this is, it looks really simple, but it's maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But I hope this looks familiar. It's very related to something that I just wrote on the screen. If you take sine squared of x for any angle and you add it to cosine squared of x for any angle x, you, those are always equal to one. So a little bit of algebra here says that sine squared minus one is cosine, negative cosine squared of x. Okay. This is called Pythagorean theorem for sines and cosines, the Pythagorean identity. Uh, it's one of the most commonly used identities. Um, so I see that numerator on the right side is exactly the second line. So I'm going to rewrite the top as negative cosine squared of x. That's divided by its denominator, cosine squared of x. And this, of course, is just negative 1. Okay, so what we've just shown is that tangent squared minus secant squared is negative one. We've got an identity, done. <laughs> There's another way to do this. We could have started from the Pythagorean identity. We could have rewritten it in terms of tangents and secants. We could have substituted in to the original thing and we could have gotten this in a different way. Uh, neither way is, I don't think either way is preferable. They both are pretty kind of involved here. Um, okay, questions on these two? This is um, this is sort of the meat and potatoes of what we're what we're going to be doing this this whole day. Alrighty, so the next one, number 15 from section 7.1 says, just simplify. Um, so we're, in a sense, we're creating our own identity here. We're just trying to simplify what we're, what we're given. Um, you've now seen me do two problems like this. Uh, what do you think we should do? Take tangent and make it sin x over co um, cosine x for both t 
chance. Yep, that's a that's a great first step. That's one of a couple different first steps that I can think of. This is good. So sine of t plus sine t over cosine t divided by sine t over cosine t. That's the, just the definition of tangent. And then instead of division, it can be turned into multiplication and switch cosine, uh, sine and cosine upside down. Yes, this is great. So you know when you divide by a fraction that you can do this. Right? This is fraction division 101. <laughs> right? Nobody divides by fractions. Everyone multiplies by their reciprocals. Um, so here in the denominator, we get everything cancels out. Up in the numerator, we distribute. And wouldn't you know that cancels out. And this one also cancels out partially. And what are we left with? We're left with just cosine of t. That's from this first distribution all the way to the left. And plus 1. That's from the second distribution to the right there. And that's that's it. Okay. And it, it becomes cosecant. No, that's it. I you you could write it as cosecant, I suppose. Oh, uh, cosecant. Maybe, yeah, you could. <laughs> it takes some work. You'd have to shift t. But this, yeah, this is not a fraction anymore, right? This is just that's up in the numerator. So there's no reciprocals here. Okay. All right. We'll move on to the next one. This is in the same block of questions. So the, the uh, instructions are just simplify. So what do you think? What's your first step? Um, you take the cosecant and you turn it into one over sine cos or one x. Good first step. Now here, it's a little less yeah. obvious what to do, but I think we maybe we still know what to do. Do you get the LCD? Yes. We've got two fractions here, right? They have different denominators. So let's find the least common denominator, which in this case is the product of the two denominators. Right, so, so we've got this denominator and this denominator. The LCD of these two fractions is the product. Sounds like Daniel's making eggs, maybe. Sounds good. <laughs> Boy, my mouth's watering. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, one minus cosine t times sine t 
Um, and in order to force these two fractions to have a common denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both by a clever one. So we're going to multiply this left one by, by what? We want its denominator to be one minus cosine t times sine t. It's missing a sine t, right? So let's multiply its denominator by sine t. But if we do that, we also need to multiply it on top by sine t as well. Okay. And on the right, we want this denominator to be one minus cosine t times sine t, but it's missing the factor one minus cosine t. So we multiply by one minus cosine t on top and bottom. Okay. This is, this is exactly what we used to do with fractions, right? Exactly. Uh, way back when we were working with numbers at the beginning of the year. And then after that, when we were working with polynomials, um, it's the same thing. Now we're just working with trig functions. Um, it's, it's, they're kind of like polynomials, but instead of a variable X, you're talking about sort of a, a function as a variable. So the cosine of T is now your X, right? Um, so what do we get here? We get sine squared t minus 1 minus cosine t. I'm going to write it like this. Um, all over one minus cosine t times sine t. Okay, so I, I multiplied here the one times this, and I'm keeping it in parentheses because there's this negative sign in front, this minus sign, right? Um, so here's that minus sign. We'll distribute that next. Um, but also, both of these now have the same denominator. So I wrote it as just one denominator. I hope that's okay. Not two separate fractions. Questions up to this point? Okay. So the next step, we're going to distribute sine squared t minus 1 plus cosine t divided by 1 minus cosine t sine t. Are we done? Can we simplify more? Where did it go? Uh, that did not go to the right place. Here we go. There we go. We just had this pop up in the previous question. What is that? I'll scroll back up. Sine squared t minus 1. Pythagorean identity says that that is negative cosine squared, right? So here we go. That is negative cosine squared of t 
we still have the cosine of t. We're dividing by one minus cosine t sine t. Okay. Now I hope you can see at this point now, the top, both those terms in the top have a common factor of cosine of t. So we can factor one out. So this is negative cosine of t plus one cosine of t divided by, and here I'm gonna rearrange, instead of writing one minus cosine t, I'm gonna put negative cosine t plus one times sine t. I'm rearranging in that way so that we can see that these cancel out. So this simplifies to one function and it's one divided by tangent, which is cotangent. That's it. So this, this thing here is equal to cotangent of T. Takes a bit of work, but we did it. <laughs> Okay. Questions on this one? How many of you took a trigonometry class back in high school? Some of you, uh, maybe? Um, in high school trigonometry classes, this is like, this is what you spend maybe like a month doing these types of things. Um, they're really, they can get really complicated. Um, this one we did here, it's not super complicated. I think you, you just sort of follow your nose, um, you know, finding common denominators using the Pythagorean theorem and factoring. So that, that's, those are not, you know, too, they're not too crazy. Um, yeah, basic trigonometry. Yeah, any in any trigonometry class, maybe you remember doing something like this. Um, these questions can get really nasty using the strangest identities. Uh, in 7.3, actually, they start teaching about these strange, strange, strange identities. Um, uh, fortunately, we're not going to get there. <laughs> I think there's some of the most uh, useless identities, I think. But uh, the Pythagorean one is pretty important. It's, it's all over the place. Um, anyway, the reason I bring it up is because a lot of students in the past that I've had, you know, when we get to this point, they're like, this reminds me of high school trigonometry. This is all we did, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just proving one identity after the other. Everyone looks back at their classes and they remember something, you know, geometry, it's, oh, proofs. Trigonometry, it's, oh, identities. Okay, so here we go. This is our first real identity question. Um, in this question, 39, the, the instructions just to say, prove the identity. So we have this um, tangent theta plus cotangent theta equals secant theta cosecant theta. So just to, to quickly point something out, in this question, when they say to prove this, or when they say to verify this, we cannot assume equality. Okay, so 
right here, they've got it written down. Tangent theta plus cotangent theta equals secant theta cosecant theta. We can't assume they're equal because this is a question. They're telling us, and that's supposed to be a question sign, they're telling us to prove this is true. So this is sort of, you know, strange thing uh, because we've spent a lot of time in this class and in previous years of, of other classes, you know, learning how to algebraically solve, you know, move one thing from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, multiplying both sides by something. You're not allowed to do that here. When you're proving trigonom uh, trigonometric identities or really any identity, you have to use just one side. So take one side and just like in the problems we've done before, where we rewrite it, right? We're rewriting sine t over one minus cosine t minus cosecant t. We're gonna rewrite that side and rewrite it with the goal of making it or turning it into the other. Okay. So so this is this is a very, very fundamental step in these kinds of problems. Um, you'll be given some equality, just like we're given here and that you're told to prove it. The only thing you can do is take one side, just, just pick a side left or right, I don't care, either side, right? And start rewriting it. In fact, like you shouldn't even write the other side down for a bit. Just take one side and start rewriting. If you can turn it into the other side, you're done. You've proven it. Um, in a bit, I'll give you an explanation of what you can do if you can't, because um, you, you technically could use both sides, but you need to sort of prove things uh, in one direction. So let me give you a diagram here. The left-hand side, tangent theta plus cotangent theta. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and do some algebra We're gonna try and make it look like the right-hand side. So sometimes these problems, the solution looks like this. You write the left-hand side, you do some algebra, and eventually you come to the right-hand side and oh, you're done. Um, other times, you know, depending on your preferences for left and right hand, you start with the right-hand side and you work your way with some algebra to the left-hand side. Either way is fine, right? Because equalities are transitive, uh, excuse me, reflexive, I believe. You can you can say the left hand equals the right hand, or you can swip them or switch them and say, well, it works in both directions. But there are problems that are really difficult. So you'll start with the left hand side, you'll do some algebra and you're like, oh, I don't know. I have not yet arrived at the right hand side you can't quite make it there because I don't know, mental block or whatever. So what do you do? <laughs> That's where you can go to the right-hand side and perform some algebra on it, right? And maybe you can't turn the right-hand side into the left-hand side, but maybe what you turned the left-hand side into, we'll call that the intermediate form, right? You do some algebra on the left-hand side and you arrive at the at some form, you get stuck there. So then you go to the right-hand side. If you can turn the right-hand side into that intermediate form, you're done. You just need to connect the dots from one side to the other, but never once can you assume equality. So, 
here we go. What do we do with this one? Uh, I don't have a preference left hand, right hand. Do, does anyone care? Should I start on the left hand side? Should I start on the right hand side? Left hand side, Nick. All right, here we go. First person to answer. Here we go. So we're going to start tangent theta plus cotangent theta. That's messy, but it's tangent theta plus cotangent theta. Hmm. Looks like we're looking at a, we're trying to find a product of secants and cosecants. Well, tangents and cotangents are fractions of sines and cosines. I know that. And I also know that they have different denominators, right? Hmm. So maybe we could write these as fractions, find a common denominator, and see where that goes. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Um, so this is sine theta over over cosine theta plus the reciprocal cosine of theta over sine theta. Common denominator is going to be sine times cosine, which I like, right? Sine times cosine. Isn't that the reciprocal, right? One over sine theta, cosine theta is secant theta, cosecant theta. So this is good. Um, so we, we're starting to connect where this goes, but we need to remember uh, what we've got up here. So in the numerator, let's see, how did we arrive here? We arrived at that common denominator by multiplying each of these by something to get that denominator. The left term was multiplying by sine theta over sine theta. The right hand side was multiplying by cosine theta over cosine theta, which gives us down here sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay, and what is this? One. It's one. That's the Pythagorean identity. So this is one over sine theta, cosine theta. And like magic, we have our result, right? Because one divided by sine theta times cosine theta is the same as one over sine theta times one over cosine theta, which is exactly in the reverse order, that cosecant theta times secant theta. Okay, so we started with this left hand side. We did some algebra and we got to the right hand side. Done, that's, that's the proof. That's the verification that this is an identity. So we could, we could do this exact same thing starting on the right hand side. What would be our first step? <laughs> well, this. Our second step would be this. Our third step would be this. And this is where it gets tricky, right? You would, you would have had to have been like, hey, this, this one up top, I'm going to rewrite it as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So that's, a, that's kind of a leap in imagination. And then our next step would have been this, which is breaking that fraction up. That's a little bit more complicated algebra. But then once you do that, you simplify and you have this. So this proof works the same way or the same in the reverse direction. 
but I, I posit this might be a more difficult proof starting on the right hand side. Um, yeah. Next, 78. Um, we're at 8.53. Maybe I'll skip to 7.2. This is the last problem I had for 7.1. Um, I can do this one with you. Uh, but from 7.2, there were other questions uh, that I wanted to get to as well. And we've got about 30 minutes left. So um, we'll come back to this unless someone really, really wants it. There's like a different question. Is it possible to go over? Uh, uh, it, it, do you mean you have a different question from 7.1? Yeah. And do you want me oh. to go over it? Well, like the beginning part of it. Sure. Uh, we can do that. Yeah. So what's what's the question? Um, it's cosecant x uh, times cosine squared x plus um, sine x. OK. Um, did I write it correctly? Yeah. Okay. Equals? Um, equals um, cosecant x. Oh, just equals cosecant x? Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Um, yeah. Here we go. I am going to start with the left hand side. Uh, the right hand side is pretty minimal. My general strategy for problems, just to give you a, I don't know. I wouldn't call it a pro tip, but generally speaking, I like to start with the side that has more things because for me, it's easier to sort of boil things down to condense them than it is to take something minimal like cosecant x and expand it. Um, but that's just my preference. I like to destroy things. I don't like to create things. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to just think about this. This is one over sine of x times cosine squared of x plus sine x. I'm going to find a common denominator here. So times sine x over sine x. This is looking promising already. Um, so this is now cosine squared x plus sine squared x over sine x. They both now have a denominator of sine x, right? Where did this, so because of one over um, sine x, uh, it's possible to multiply sine x over sine x f to simplify the sine x <laughs> oh, that's being added. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so this, yeah, this cosecant x is really just um, this fraction one over sine x, which it which gives this cosine squared times it. That's that's a fraction now. It's cosine squared divided by sine. Um, this right term is not a fraction yet, but oh. we can just multiply it by one. You know right. why not? Um, sine over sine is just one. So we can turn the right one into a fraction, sine squared over sine, by multiplying by sine over sine. Um, okay? It, yeah, that, that was the part I was confused about. Okay. Yep. From here, it should be pretty simple, right? Because this top is 1. That's the Pythagorean identity. So this is 1 over sine. Yeah. Which is cosecant. Because I was confused about it, because I, um, I I tried to simplify the, the the cosine and then boil it down to like, mm -hmm. yeah, it became weird. All right, thank you. Yep. Yeah, well, I guess now now you all know, right? This is really inter uh, something else that's an interesting fact. <laughs> this is, I don't know, maybe it's not interesting. If you have some function, any function. And you want to, you want to make it look weird. You can literally multiply it by cosine squared of x for any angle x, and then just add sine of x, and that's guaranteed to be the exact same thing. <laughs> so that's 
It's interesting. <laughs> Next. Okay. 7.2. 7.2. Seven point two gets into a lot of these mm, different identities, uh, which are also common. Um, I say common, but they are common in any work that requires trigonometry, uh, especially these first ones that we'll be working with. Um, they're also common in calculus, so that that would mean that they are also common in application questions in engineering. Um, usually they're already hard coded into computer programs uh, and things like that, uh, you know, AutoCAD, things like this will automatically compute these things for you. Uh, a calculator will automatically compute these things for you, um, even in exact form. So. It, it, but the theory behind these things is, is, is good, and this is where we learn it. Um, so we're going to be talking in 7.2 about the addition and subtraction formulas for sines and cosines. Um, so, uh, you know, usually when I teach this, I make a fool of myself by acting like a cheerleader, because when I learned these things for the first time, uh, my professor acted like a fool. Uh, and he, he was dancing like a cheerleader up in front of us and uh, singing a, a, a song. So I'm not going to do that now because I'm standing in my basement. <laughs> but were I in front of you, you would have had a bit of a more, bit more of a show. So here you go. There's there are these nice um, formulas. Um, so. Let's just say we've got two angles. And we want to add them together inside sine and cosine. So sine of one angle plus another is equal to something. And cosine of one angle or another is equal to, well, something else. Um, how, how do you do this? You know, is, it, is it always equal to something? Well, yeah, and you memorize it this way, okay? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. There's this nice little phrase that you can say. Um, it sounds like a chant. It's got this really nice ring to it, this nice repetition and this rhythm to it. It's this. Sine, cosine. Cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. So these are the angle sum identities. If you take the sine of an angle plus another, that's equal to sine of the first times cosine of the second plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. For cosine, it's cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first times sine of the second. And that, that rhythmic phrase is sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, 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 where that first sine is actually the negative sign. So this is, these are what we're going to use over and over here. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, these problems aren't too difficult um, if you have these things memorized. If you don't, you're up a creek. <laughs> so here we go. This first one is sine of 15 degrees. So uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, 15. That's, that's equal to... 45 plus a negative 30, right? So let's call this angle one and this is angle two. 
So sine of 15 degrees is equal to sine of 45, that's the first angle, times cosine of the second one, negative 30, plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not so bad um, because we have these things memorized, I hope. Root two over two, root two over two. Those are the easy ones. Cosine of negative 30 degrees, that's the same as cosine of 30 degrees, which is root three over two. Sine of negative 30 degrees is equal to the opposite of sine of 30 degrees, which is one half. And, and there's your answer. Um, you can simplify it a little bit. This is the square root of six plus the square root of two over, and I know I'm going on to the other page, I hope that's okay, over um, four. They both have a common denominator of four. The left-hand numerator is root six, the right-hand numerator is root two. Wait, wouldn't um, sine of negative 30 be negative one half? Yes, yes. Well, I forgot it, didn't I? Um, boom, boom, minus. There you go. Thank you. I said it, right? I said that out loud. I said it's equal to the negative of sine of 30 degrees. <laughs> uh, didn't write it down. Okay, questions on this? Okay, let's look at this next question. It's really ugly, but I'm not going to scroll down just yet because I want you to see this when you look at this. This is equal to what? Maybe I can scroll up just a little bit more. Remember, this first one was sine of 15. And 15 was 45 plus negative 30. So I just, I wrote that into the identity. What's this equal to? It's the sine of 18 plus 27. Right, if I wrote this down, the identity above says it's equal to that. Sine of the first, cosine of the second angle, plus cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So now we're just going in reverse. I recognize the left-hand side here as the angle sum identity, or the right? So I know on the right side that it's just the sine of the sum of those angles. Well, that's just the sine of 18 plus 27. That's 45. That's root 2 over 2. Okay. Next question. Tangent. Oh, yikes. 
tangent x minus pi equal to tangent x. So this was the other portion of, of this section, um, asking you to prove identities related to these angle sum things, these angle uh, difference things. And so, so things get kind of complicated kind of fast because now we're, we're talking about all these identities that we had before, which was primarily the Pythagorean theorem and um, you know, what have you, the related reciprocal identities and things. But now we also have these angle sum identities. And moreover, we have these other things where we know that if you shift, if, if you shift a trigonometric function, so that this is a shifting, um, there is some effect. Right. In the case of tangent, they're saying here to prove that uh, shifting to the right by pi has no effect. If you think about the graph of tangent, you know, it repeats over and over again like this. And they're saying if, if you take this whole graph and you move it to the right pi, you get the exact same thing. That's what question 29 is asking you to prove, to show. So, do you wanna start on the left-hand side or do you wanna start on the right-hand side? Makes no difference to me. Left. Okay. Two votes for left. All right. So to me, you know, I, I see this left hand side of x minus pi. And I, I think a couple different things. Um, and I'm pretty sure both of them would would work out. What do you see? What's the, what's the first thing that runs through your mind? So we're, we're starting with tangent of x minus pi. We're gonna try and turn it into just tangent. So there's the complicated way uh, of thinking about things like this. And then there's the, uh, the simpler way of thinking about things like this. Um, since I'm not hearing anyone, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me say first the complicated one, and then I'll show you something, uh, which is the simple one <laughs> and it'll be fine. We'll, we'll all be good. Um, so here we go. We had these, Identity is up above, right? So let's let's look at them, because when I when I think tangent, I think sine over cosine, right? Sine over cosine. So this is equal to sine of x minus pi over cosine of x minus pi, and that's fine. That's great but now it's just more complicated. <laughs> so now let's think about our identities and we'll get into the simpler version that you could have 
Right, yeah. Sine x over cosine x minus pi. Not sure where you're getting pi. Um, remember that um, when you take sines and cosines of things, uh, Daniel, you'll never get something bigger than one or less than negative one. So the pi should be a red flag. But you're right, we're going to look at fractions of things. Um, so let's go back to the angle sum identity that we had before. If, if And let's apply it to x minus pi. But let's also think of this um, as two separate problems all together. So here we've got x plus negative pi. That's our angle sum. So this numerator is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So sine of x times cosine of pi plus, oops, I should say negative pi plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, right? And now in the denominator, we're working with cosine. So it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. So cosine of x, cosine of negative pi, uh, minus, I almost wrote plus already, minus sine x, sine negative pi. So you can see this is more complicated, right? This is the more complicated way. Uh, but this is what you would do if you did not have the tangent sum identity memorized. <laughs> so, so I can see the uh, I can see the benefits of not memorizing more formulas, but I can also see the benefits of memorizing more formulas um, just from this basic problem. So Daniel, you, you've got the right idea here. This is what we've got on the on the right hand side now. So tangent of x minus pi is this business. So what do these things simplify to? Well, cosine of negative pi, that's negative one. So this is sine x times negative one. What is sine of negative pi? That's zero, right? So we're at this angle here, we go around to there. So we're at a height of zero, we're still on the x axis. So that sine of negative pi is zero, divided by cosine x cosine negative pi. So cosine of x times negative one again. Minus sine of x times sine of negative pi. This again is zero for the same reason before. So this is negative one divided by negative one. And what's left is sine x over cosine x. That's tangent x. All right. So yeah, Daniel, perfect, perfect idea. I don't know where the pi came from. Um, but I'm sure it was evaluating these incorrectly, that, that you're right there. On the final exam, here's to Daniel and everyone else. I don't know if you can see his answer. He, he had this minus pi on the final exam. If this question were out of 10 points, oh man, that's like eight right there. Eight out of 10, it's just so close. You know, you had the, the big idea, so I, partial credit would abound, okay? Just to make you feel a little bit better about that upcoming test. Maybe that doesn't make you feel better. Sorry if it didn't, but that would be mostly partial credit, most of it, Daniel. Okay, here's another one. Oh. Sorry, I have a question. Go for it. Um, it's sine x, um, 
times cosine minus the plus cosine x. What happened with that, that cosine x? Yeah, what happened here? It got killed by being multiplied by zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, same thing down here. Sine x was multiplied by sine of negative pi, but sine of negative pi is zero. So that kills the sine x. Yeah. Okay. And at the very beginning, y tangent is equal sine and cosine. That's that's how it's defined. Um, that's a formula. Sure. Um, you remember sine of an angle is the y y coordinate on the unit circle, right? Cosine of an angle is the x coordinate on the unit circle. These are the definitions. What is tangent? Tangent of an angle is the ratio y over x, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's sine divided by cosine. Oh, OK. Yeah, so right away, I, I changed this into that form. Because I don't have the tangent angle sum identity memorized. <laughs> but I do know the cheerleader chant for sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. <laughs> I do know that. Yeah. Right? So a lot of this is just, you know, what do you know? What tools are in your toolbox? For me, it's Pythagorean theorem, angle sums, double angles, half angles. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, not applied to trig, but just in general. Uh, 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 definitions of sines and cosines, reciprocal identities, for the most part. With those things and with a little bit of time, you can invent or reinvent other trig identities at will. Um, yeah, there's sort of like a minimal tool set, the, the, the identities I just listed. There's kind of a minimal tool set needed to prove them all. Um, yeah, I see we're, we're out of time, but the next problem is very similar. Um, so I see angle sum, angle sum for cosine, you're going to get things that cancel out. So write those out in terms of, you know, the angle sum identity. Same thing for sine and, co and sine here. Just write out the angle sum identities for sine of x plus y and sine of x minus y. You're going to get a lot of things that cancel out. And my guess is everything will cancel out except for sine of y divided by cosine of y. And that's going to give you this. So just use the angle sum identity four times. And I'm pretty sure you're going to have that result. Uh, the next, next, I left some blank slides here at the end. So that was that. OK, <clears throat> uh, that's it for class today. Thank you for coming. Um, if you have questions about the final exam, uh, feel free to ask. I can stick around for a few more minutes here. Um, if you had questions about this material today, uh, I, like I said, I'll stick around for a couple minutes here just in case. But um, you can shoot me an email. The homework for 7.1 and 7.2 is due this Friday. Uh, so that's your last homework assignment of the year for this class. Congratulations. You're almost there. Uh, and the last quiz will be next Monday on 7.1 and 7.2. Um, so that'll be your last quiz of the semester with this class. Congratulations. Well done. You're almost done. And then, like I said, uh, the final is coming up November 30th through December 2nd. So have a great day and I'll stick around for a minute if anyone has any questions. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, I just said like quick question. Sure, about, shoot. Like, final. I don't know if this, this is really a big thing. I just wanted to ask for, like, I guess, just so I know, but, like, I don't know. Like, so when I'm, like, writing it out, like, on paper, do you want, can I just write, like, how would I put this? Do I have to rewrite, like, the question, I guess, if that makes any sense, where it says, like, 
please, you know, solve for something. Can I just start like working on the question at hand or do you want me to like, I don't know if that, if I'm trying. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, no, you don't need to rewrite the question. Um, you know, the, the questions will be listed one question two. like, there's not gonna be any space. <laughs> so, um, uh, what I would do on your work is just write the number one and then show your work, you know, box your okay. answer or whatever. And yeah. then, yeah. yeah. And then just clearly denote, here's where question two starts. Here's the, you know what I mean? Like you don't need to rewrite the question. Just put a number indicating this is for problem one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure, cause I don't know if I'm going to be like encountering those like real world situations where it's like a lighthouse displays light at like 45 degrees and then it moves it. Like, I don't know if it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. for no, nothing's going to require calculators. So I don't know that I'll put any application questions on. They usually require calculators. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Okay. That was, that was pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. I'll see you later. All right. See you.